Retired photographer David Boddy and his wife Hilary dream of creating a new life with their two daughters in France. It's a challenge, we have to get there. They plan to run barge holidays on the French canals and are renovating this rusty old cargo vessel. Throw plumbing isn't my forte. Will this be their chance to escape the daily grind? Or will their hopes of leaving England run aground? Either we go or we throw the whole thing away. Hilary and David Boddy have had enough of the rat race. They want to radically alter their lives and spend the rest of their days living and working on the water. Their dream is to run barge holidays on the beautiful canals of Burgundy. But right now, they've got to put up with this, a mud flat in Essex. Their aim is to take their barge across the English Channel to Calais and travel through the French canal system to Dijon in Burgundy. But first, they have to endure another nine months of Colchester mud. Hello. Hello, Hello. Charlie. How are you doing? All right, welcome aboard, Lottie. Lovely location. Hi. Lovely to see You've you. Done very well. Lovely to see you. Yes, welcome to the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it as. No, in a lot of mud. A lot yeah. of nasty mud, yes. But it's, it's a very big boat, isn't it? Big old girl, yeah. I mean, clearly it needs quite a lot of work. I mean, it's, yes, she does. Yeah. Who's going to do all of that work? You're looking at him. Right. Have you actually done up a, a boat before? No. Right. This is a major, major um, project for me um, and yeah. a very, very steep learning curve. If you truly grasp the enormity of what we're, we're doing. So I think most people would walk away. Oh, wow. That's huge. That's bigger than my sitting room. Yeah, it's pretty big, isn't it? Built in 1926, the barge is 110 feet long and currently has seven cabins. At the back, the plan is to create two bedrooms and a small lounge where the family will live when guests are on board. Moving forward beyond the wheelhouse is a galley kitchen which will serve the spacious saloon, which will be used for dining and recreation for guests. Beyond the saloon are five more cabins below deck. The first of these will be used as an office. Another will be converted into a guest bathroom. The remaining three will be guest bedrooms, one of which will have an ensuite, off which will be a utility room for laundry. On the first floor, there will be a large decked area for guests to enjoy the view. This is the accommodation area down here. Right. This little cabin in David here plans to renovate the barge single-handedly, and he's got his work cut out if he hopes to have it ready for the holiday season next June. In the winter, this former Dutch cargo vessel, Lottie, will be the family home. During the summer months, the bodies will run barge holidays on the French canals. Experienced sailor David will be captain and Hilary will be in charge of hospitality. Whose idea is all of this? Hilary's. Is it? I mean, Charlie Hilary's. Unfortunately, yes. yes is it? Yeah, I, I'm supposed to be slightly more sensible, but I don't know. Well, you, I'm, usually the, I'm usually the irresponsible one, and, and so it was really out of character for Hills, really, because I've always been the child in the family, and I was quite staggered when she actually came up with the idea of living on 184 tons of steel. Why did you make such a, a radical decision? What was driving that? We opened a photographic studio in Colchester, which turned out to be a disaster. A disaster. And I, I think also coupled with the fact that, you know, it was the onset of the digital age, I think we got, got to the point that we just wanted to opt out and do something completely different. Yeah, we just wanted to stop. Stop, you know, stop the train we want to get off. The bodies had to sell their home on Mersey Island on the Essex coast to pay off their debts from the collapsed photography business. With the money left over, Hilary and David bought the barge for £120,000. 
David will be working on the boat full time and Hillary will be keeping her part time nursing job to cover living expenses. The two daughters, Katie and Sophie, are not quite as excited as their parents about living on a boat. We practically are living in a ditch. It's not the prettiest of places. Yuck. <laughs> because we're used to very, very pretty surroundings. Mixed feelings, I think, would be there, because we'd have this beautifully done up boat, and if that sinks in the channel, I'll not be best pleased if my house goes underwater. <laughs> Hilary and David bought the barge three years ago and have already spent £30,000 on getting her seaworthy. They're determined not to get into debt and hope to raise the remainder of the renovation costs by selling some of their possessions on the internet. What's your budget? We don't have one. Right. We're hoping to be able to complete this with about £20,000. And how have you come to that estimation? Have you got a schedule of works? Have you got a complete costing list? It's, it's we've got based, an approximate yes, costing list. Yes, we've got an approximate, approximate costing list, but it's been based on what we've spent so far. Have you got a schedule worked out? Yes. Of when you're going to do what job and exactly how much, how much time that job is going to take? It's just not possible to put timescales on them, but I know how long these jobs will take, and I know in my own mind how long... Well, why do you write it down, them. then? No point. Well, there is every point, because then you will actually understand whether you're being realistic about this date in June, and then you can start to make plans accordingly. Think, if not... I have my list. My list tells me all. It doesn't, Charlie. though. Why don't you formalise that information? Why don't you get him to formalise it so you but, know how long it's going to take you? We formalise it verbally. It still seems like there's a long way to go if you've only got eight, nine months yes. to do it all in. I've do, done two houses previous to this, and, and, mm. and it can be done quite quickly, and Mind it can be done, done, done quite effectively, can't it? You did tell me on the first house we ever did up that it was only going to take about 18 months. The actual house took seven years. Seven years. Yeah. So with the barge costing £120,000 and having already spent 30000 on renovation, they need to spend another 20,000 to complete the project. That's a total cost of 170,000 pounds. But 20,000 pounds doesn't seem much, considering they've got to renovate the hull, install new heating and plumbing, and completely modernize the living quarters. This is a wonderful, adventurous project. But I have concerns. The bodies have no experience of doing up a, a boat like this and with no schedule and a budget that relies on them flogging their stuff. I just wonder if they can keep this dream afloat. The Body family dream of moving to Burgundy and running barge holidays on the French canals. We just got to the point that we just wanted to opt out and do something completely different. Yeah. The only problem is that the plan relies on David doing most of the necessary work himself. Well, I don't know where the bloody hell that bit goes. And raising the £20,000 budget by selling family possessions on the internet. To truly grasp the enormity of what we're doing, I think most people would walk away. The bodies have been living on this old Dutch barge for just over a year. And David has been working single-handedly on it for the last six months. The thing about renovating a boat is that there is loads of work that goes on below deck where it can't be seen just to keep it seaworthy. On top of that, Hilary and David have got to bring the living quarters back to life so they can offer their guests a wonderful place to stay. When you put those two things together, you start to realise how much work there is to do before next June. So with only nine months left before the start of the holiday season, they've decided to enlist the help of a Polish labourer. Uh, David did start to do the cabins by himself. I'd quite like to see these cabins finished before I go into a retirement home. And I could see this just going on forever and a day. So we have brought in some workforce to make sure that we just stay on target. While the hired hand gets to the dirty work, ex-photographer David busies himself elsewhere. I like to do the sort of, you know, the nice jobs on deck, you know, like the painting bit, so she can actually see what I've done. 
Whereas, you know, I get more brownie points for the stuff you can see, you know, basically. But David's approach appears to be a little haphazard. Where am I lock? Somewhere? Dave was born probably to the wrong country, really. Oh, Maniana was uh, probably invented by him. That's extraordinary. I had it in my hand a few minutes ago. And sometimes things do take an awful lot longer than you would like. Oh, it's in the door. <laughs> but that's the nature of the beast and you're not going to change. Completely the wrong size. The bodies need a total of £20,000 to finish the build. They've managed to raise £10,000 so far from the sale of some unwanted possessions. In order to keep costs down, they're relying on friends to do jobs on the cheap. But this system of mates rates means they're often at the end of the queue when it comes to actually getting jobs done. With only a wood-burning stove providing heating and hot water, the bodies need to install a proper central heating system. Today, they're waiting for a plumber friend to fit the boiler. But so far, there's no sign of him. Please try again later. Uh, so I'm afraid this is one of the things that happens, you know, when you are very dependent upon their availability and fitting in with their schedules rather than the other way around. But what I'm saving, it's worth it. You know, it's worth being a little bit cold you know, for a few more days. But the thought of another winter on board without heat isn't going down well with daughters Sophie and Katie. In the winter, when I go into my cabin, it is horrible. It's no heating and it's freezing. It's like sleeping in an ice cube. It's last year, obviously, we had uh, ice on the inside of the windows, which was interesting. You know, you could call it a bit of character building, I suppose, so. To get this boiler, that would be really good because then we can have nice, hot bath. Yeah, that should be quite good rather than freezing to death and having about six blankets and my coat on in bed. That looks quite funny. <laughs> of course, there's days where you despair that anything is ever going to happen. When it's grim on the boat, it's truly grim. It seems to sort of kick off on everybody and then even the dog seems down in the dumps. But it is tough going sometimes, yeah. While they're waiting for the plumber, David is selling off some of his collection of aviation memorabilia to fund the rest of the build. I've got um, a genuine World War II leather flying helmet, as worn by Spitfire pilots and bomber crews. This is in extremely good condition. Um, we'll, we'll fetch probably around about £500, and £500 goes a long way. This ad hoc approach to the budget means that cash flow is somewhat erratic. So here's postman. Got a cheque for me there? No. Oh, not today. It's a sort of bit of a joke here. We always, whenever a postman arrives, we always ask if they've got any cheques for us. Otherwise, we don't really want to know about bills and nasty letters like that. It may just be another bill. It's a mooring licence. Nothing so exciting than a mooring licence. With no new funds coming in, David has to get on with whatever jobs he can do himself. So he continues the lengthy task of painting the outside of the barge. It's like the fourth bridge, you know. No sooner have you finished this end, you've got to start all over again down the other end. But that's the nature of steel boats, I'm afraid. There are times when I do get a little bit depressed by the surroundings, and I'd rather be on the French canals, enjoying my glass of salsa, <laughs> rather than a pot of primer. <laughs> well, you did. Yeah. It's the dream of the French canals and French wine that seem to keep them all going. Is it six o'clock yet? I think I'm going to try this glass of sancerre, you know. Oh, OK. You want some? Yeah, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Santé. Australia. It's 11 et bon pour la santé. We are depending upon you, so, aren't we, to a very large extent. I mean, to, oh. you know... To translate. To translate, <laughs> to entertain, you know, the, the customers, after all, <laughs> you know. And I think that... Entertain the customers on the door? In what way? No, entertain them on Dance. the boat. While David and his daughter discuss life in France, Hilary has a plan. Sophie will be celebrating her 18th birthday on the barge, and Hilary decides it's the perfect opportunity to put the whole family to work. So, are we going to have a, a big push so that we can actually crack on and 
get things progressed, yes? We've got four yeah, weeks until your party. Weeks. Yeah. And then we need to get the cabins finished because the family are coming. You know, that's our deadline. If you've got some time over half time, then it would be nice if you yeah. could. Maybe she yeah. I've got about 50 essays to write, but in between that, she should oh. be able to. We're going to have to focus on the bathroom quite hard, aren't we? Because we need that really smoothly operational, shall we say. <laughs> no foreign objects down the macerator, please. Uh, there was a, a macerator. Um, it's a bit like me, but it's connected to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> It's now ten days until Sophie's birthday. The recent arrival of a cheque means the bodies have been able to pay for some help to get the barge ready. But they're still waiting for their friendly plumber to install the heating and bathroom in time for the party. However, it's not just the plumbing that's behind schedule. We are sleeping on the floor. Uh, we have been sleeping in minus three. It's a bit like a padded cell, actually, if you, if you look in there. We were really keen to have somewhere for our guests to sleep. David's got just 10 days to build six beds for their guests. Hillary's probably going to have a major sense of humour failure if we don't get the beds made, and I will be dispatched to Siberia, no doubt. But uh, I'm going to get my butt kicked, clearly, if I don't pull my finger out and start to get something moving. So I really have got my work cut out for the next few days. With time running out, it's all hands on deck, and even the girls are doing their bit. Oh, I've already done that one, Kate, as well. Oh, I hate that noise. I'm doing that. It's good fun. It's the best thing I've ever done before. The worst job I've ever done is... The washing up. Scraping the rust. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Over the next week, David makes a concerted effort to finish the work. It's now three days until Sophie's birthday. David and Hilary are no longer sleeping on the floor, and four of the cabins are now ready for guests. We're as ready as we're... You know, the cabins are still pretty agricultural, but we're as ready as we're going to be. At the end of the day, it's just family, so I think I'd be a bit more headless chicken if it was um, paying guests. I'm hoping we're going to get a bit of wow factor by the weekend. <laughs> I'd be very disappointed if people just come on board and go, hmm, you haven't done much, Dave. And so I should go and bury myself in the engine room with a glass of sancerre and a cigar. Although the guests will now have somewhere comfortable to sleep, plans for a new bathroom and warm radiators haven't materialised. There was a £1,000 worth of difference between using somebody on mates' rates and using a plumber. It was silly to waste money in that direction. We've got to keep sight of the fact that Sophie's birthday isn't the build um, or refurbishment of the boat. It's, a, it's, part, it's part of the journey. But such budgetary constraints don't bode well for the real deadline in June. I've let David out of the doghouse for a few days. He's been a good boy. You know, he's got a tick and a star on his chart. And if he gets five ticks and a star at the end of the week, you know, his bag of sweeties is dished out. <laughs> It's Sophie's birthday, and the first chance for many friends and family to see how the boat is coming along. We've done... Yeah, this yeah. wasn't done. Yes, yeah, so this is yours tonight. Is this all right for you? Yeah, yeah. So we've got this one here. Yeah, so, uh, you know, they're getting on really well. We're, we're winning. So, wow. you have, so you can have this one as well. So you've got your choice. And you've got en suite as well. So. Oh, brilliant. And they've all reacted just the way I wanted them to react and they all love their cabins, and I think the kids are happy. So we should have a jolly good evening ahead of us. It's been three months since I last visited the barge. Hello, David. And with no real budget for the build, 
I'm intrigued to find out how much they've managed to do. I'm very well, but it's looking very spick and span, isn't it? Isn't it? Hello, Hilary. Hello. Now, this is looking very smart. Has there been lots of painting going on? Oh, a lot. Yeah. There's been lots of things going on, which is uh, starting to take shape. Can um, we see how we're getting on downstairs? Absolutely. Let's Brilliant. have a look, shall we? All this progress I'm hearing about. Absolutely. So is this where the bathroom's going? Oh, there is a bathtub in here. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Plumbed in? No, not plumbed in. Hopefully we'll be by next week. OK, it's that a, looks much better, doesn't it? It's, uh... So that's a single bed at the moment? That's a single bed at the moment, yeah. Can't that radiator just be moved back a bit? Um... Down the pipe run, and so you could get a double in? We could possibly do that. I mean, like all these things, you know, it is a movable feast. Um... Why did you put it there, then? Well, I think um, I was probably off at the other end of the boat uh, tackling another little problem when the plumber was uh, busy Sticking installing it. it. There's clearly down. been progress. The central heating's finally in. But they still don't have a proper schedule, as I suggested on my first visit. And I'm concerned about David's haphazard approach. Well, here, you're very much aware, we have no actually sort of hard and fast plans about anything on this. At the end of the day, you know, we've got to do the best we can within our budget. Mm. Yeah, but I, see, I sort of get a sense that that's a bit of an issue. So Absolutely. what about if you sat down and planned it, maybe you would have a bit more of a clear idea of what you're mm, doing? Maybe, maybe, possibly. It strikes me that there's still quite a lot to do in here, isn't there? I know, but I've got a rather large boot up my arse on a very regular <laughs> basis. What do you mean by that? Well, it's called the wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was also interested to find out how wife Hillary was coping, not only with the build, but with David. Do you think he's approaching it in an organised and methodical manner? Because um, I'm not sure that he is the most ordered and methodical worker. No, he's in his defence, because we are working such a tight budget, he perhaps can't proceed from one thing to the other thing in a logical manner, which makes it appear disorganised. Mm. So it's, it's, it's working under difficult conditions? He's working under difficult conditions. Um, either that or he is just lying around on the sofa. <laughs> Which sleeping you half do the day. slightly suspect, <laughs> I can tell it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you do wonder when you've been out of the house for nearly 12 hours, you think, what the hell have you done all day? <laughs> With so little funds, planning is key. So I'm going to try again to get them to draw up a proper schedule. Storage. Paint and varnishing the, 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 the lounge. Mm -hmm. um, Four or five days. Four or five days? Yeah. Week. Well, because you've got coat, you've got to wait for it to dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get that as 29 weeks, which is, let's say, seven and a half months. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sat down and worked that out? Well, in terms of time. Have you ever sat down and done that exercise? Oh, yeah, no, uh, no, done that exercise? No. <laughs> You're, you're now wanting to time frame it and zone yeah. it. I know, crazy, um, isn't it? Imagine trying to time frame a building project. What a, what a crazy idea. <laughs> uh, no, I, I admire your optimism. Um, I've lived with him for 20 plus years and um, I haven't achieved it. So if you're <laughs> able to do that in sort of a few short visits, um, then <laughs> miracles, will have, miracles will have occurred. But. He's good at working to a deadline. Our deadline is next June, and I actually have quite a lot of faith that it will all come together. Well, I've tried to get David and Hilary to plan this project in the way that I normally would, but I don't think they're gonna take it on. And what concerns me is that a project that's not planned meticulously, especially one where there's a very small budget that is running out quickly, could very easily stall. And that dream of Sancerre on the sunny French canals could remain just that, a dream. David and Hilary Body are now five months into the renovation of their barge. They've set themselves a deadline of June to research routes on the French canals for their barge holiday business. But the credit crunch has started to bite. They haven't made a single sale of their possessions on the internet in three months. And lack of funds has put them seriously behind schedule. A budget is always a worry. We're looking at selling some equipment that's redundant, but none of it is particularly happy in a depressed market with a credit crunch. 
We are sort of entering a recession at the moment, and I think people perhaps don't have as much available cash to go and buy lumps of furniture or expensive bits of camera equipment. And we may be in a situation where perhaps be prepared to accept a lower offer for many of the items. But on a positive note, their Mates Rates plumber is finally available to install the bathroom. To keep costs down, David tries to lend a helping hand. I don't think I'd ever make a very speedy plumber, that's for sure. Do you, know, do you actually know what you're doing? No. I don't have a bloody clue. Do you need your glasses? I've got my glasses, but I, I can just about make out the shape of a toilet. I, uh, I quite enjoy this sort of stuff, but I'm... Useless, it? With only four months to go, Hillary decides to generate some interest for their trip to France. They're not taking full paying customers, but hope that friends and family will share food and fuel costs on a trial run. I've been sending out mailers to people who may want to join us for the season. At the moment, it's looking quite promising. Quite a lot of people have expressed interest and we're asking for firm bookings by April so that we can go safely in the knowledge and we're not just heading off with an empty boat. The arrival of spring seems to have energised David. He's finally finished the kitchen, a job he started back in early December. Yes, he does like to take his time on things. It's like me, putting things off until the last minute, you know, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And then you get to the, the deadline and think, oh, God, you know, you've actually got to do something. <sighs> I can't believe you've actually finished. <laughs> How many months is that, three? No, oh, don't. That's could be one of your more epic performances, hasn't it? Oh, it's... Didn't it take you seven years to do the bathroom at Pickett's? Yeah. So, I mean, by comparison, you're working at the speed of light, really, aren't you? Speed of light, speed of light, mate. As spring progresses, the body's fortunes turn, and this morning, another cheque arrives in the post. We've actually had quite a successful month. We've probably generated somewhere in the region of about £1,300 um, alone this month, just on selling items that really, you know, would, were otherwise surplus to requirement. I'm just about to post off um, a World War II helmet that we've sold. The kind of funds it's raised equate to probably the flooring in the bathroom. If we hadn't been able to generate any sort of funding at all, things would have just simply come to a halt. This recent injection of cash means they can now afford to paint the hull, but the money doesn't stretch to doing it professionally. So, in true body style, they've roped in their friends and organised a painting party. Uh, last time we had the hull painted, which was when we bought the boat, it cost us about two and a half thousand pounds um, in the boatyard in uh, Holland. By doing it this way, it'll probably cost us two or three hundred just for the paint. But then, I don't know, haven't totted up the bar bill yet, have we? Um, the wine will probably exceed the cost of the paint, I imagine, like <laughs> the sort of crew we're going to have on the beach for the weekend. They've beached the boat at low tide and need to get the work done before the water rises. As you can see, we've got quite a workforce here today and uh, they're all working really, really hard to try and get some paint on before the tide comes in. It's a complete race against time and tide, literally. It's going to get stuck in the mud, please. I'm fine. It's going very well. I've got my nice boat painting attire on. Yep. Quite exciting. <laughs> I just cannot understand why they've given me this size paintbrush to paint this boat. <laughs> I just, you know, there's something wrong somewhere. <laughs> it does make a hell of a difference when you've got a project like this, when you've got friends who are prepared to come in and basically help you out of the spot. As you can see, we are being latched by water, so um, I think for the moment we've almost got to pull out from here. So it's actually been brilliant. We've actually got a coat of paint on both sides and it's looking good. 
I'm optimistic that she's going to be presentable to go to France in eight weeks. She won't be completely finished, but she's never going to be a finished project. There's always going to be a job to do. But it's now the end of April, and the bodies are brought back down to earth. Even friends and family are struggling to commit to the trial run. And for the first time, David and Hillary are reconsidering whether now really is the right time to make a permanent move to France. We're having second thoughts about just upping sticks and going, with the current economic climate being quite as critical as it is and the exchange rate being so poor. Luxury goods such as holidays are not selling at the best of times. We've adopted a more cautious approach and decided that I won't give notice to my job just yet and we won't take Katie out of school. We'll just do the first season and assess things accordingly at the end of that. The last time I was here, I had some real concerns about this project, that a lack of planning and more importantly, a lack of money could really threaten progress. There's now just two months before the bodies hope to set sail for France. And part of me is beginning to wonder whether they can actually pull this off. When I arrive, I find Hillary hard at work. Right, what can I do? Are you any good at And she ropes me in to help yeah. out. Okay. I hate DIY though. I, I, I loathe it with I, I loathe it with a passion. I, I'm now at the point I just want to go. Hence the um, the, the, the role. The desperate the, measures. The, the desperate measures. You know, it's sort of it's either it's either go to work day and night and create more income or pick up the roller. So um, it's been pick up the roller. I don't quite know how to put this without sounding uh, a bit mean, but I mean, I don't see a huge amount that has happened in the last five months. I mean, poor old Dave takes an awful lot of stick from all our friends um, on the level of progress, but what they fail to recognise as well is that doing a boat is never as simple as a house because so much of it is unseen. We have to make sure on a, on a daily basis that this vessel remains seaworthy and intact. I get a sense that for the first time the bodies are having to face the reality of doing a project like this on no budget. But I am relieved to hear that they are now thinking hard about the viability of their business. We don't want to end up burning our fingers. Um, we're determined that we don't end up with any kind of debt or unpleasant situations. So uh, the, 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 the heat has come off slightly in terms of our schedule. And I suppose if you do decide not to go to France, you, you, the only option really is just stay here in, as you've called it, the ditch for another year. <laughs> I don't think I could face another year in the ditch. It's just not somewhere I want to live. So either we go or we throw the whole dream away. That's all very well. But as always, the success of this project relies on money. I'm keen to find out if they have enough funds to make it happen. Okay. Assuming you don't sell any more stuff on eBay, how much money have you got left in the budget? There's a couple of thousand. Um, which will hopefully do the trip to France. How much is it actually going to cost you to get over there in terms of the fuel and the licences? We were working that out the other day. Um, we think we can get almost there and back on a two tanks two of fuel. Tanks, yeah, yeah. It's going to cost us about £800 to fill her up. So £1,600 of fuel. Hmm. But then that's biting into everything that's back up. I mean, I don't want to... Oh, I don't quite know how to put this because I don't want to rain on your parade, but, you know, you've got a lot of stuff to sell. You've got a lot of work to do, and you've still got to get a few thousand odd miles down to France. In this old girl, quite a lot of variables there, aren't there? Well, the amazing thing is, Charlie, I can turn that key now, or preferably when the tide's in. <laughs> I could turn that key now, and we could head for France, and we could be in France within 24 hours. We will get there, we will do it. The barge may well come back, we may well have to spend another winter here. Um, hey ho, you know, it's not the end of the world. I love your optimism. <laughs> we'll see you in France, Charlie. <laughs> I wouldn't change your optimism Sometime. for the world. We'll see you in Charlie. We'll see you in France. I have absolutely no doubt that Hillary and David are going to make 
the most welcoming and wonderful hosts. They're absolutely convinced they're going to make it to France, and I love their optimism. What I would say is there's a lot that could go wrong between here and Burgundy. For the last 12 months, David and Hilary Boddy have been lovingly restoring this old Dutch barge with a little help from their two daughters, Sophie and Katie. This was always a very romantic and ambitious project, but having a budget that relied on the Boddy selling their possessions in a massive recession and a collapse in the pound has meant that making this dream come true was never going to be easy. Add to that good old mother nature and you begin to understand why I'm not in France, but here in Essex. Hello. Hello, Charlie. Hillary. David. Lovely to see you. Well, this looks incredibly smart. A little different to when you last <laughs> saw it, I think. Although Hillary and David didn't manage to make it to France, they've taken the barge a few miles down river to show her at her best. And it's quite amazing how the timber deck and a thorough paint job have made old Lottie look like new. So this is almost the dream, isn't it? On the water, beautiful day, it is. up on deck. Fine. But we're just, uh, we're not in France, are no, we? No, we're not in France. What so. happened? Tell me what happened. Well, unfortunately, we had the worst July, I think, uh, on, on record. We were fraught with bad weather and we were just stuck, completely stuck by the weather and we couldn't go anywhere because of the high winds, basically. We spent my entire holiday sitting on the quayside watching weather reports with increasing despondency. I mean, has that put pay to the French adventure? Oh, we didn't make it to France this year, but no, we're still totally committed. We're still very positive about it. And we've now ended up with a beautiful home. Will you show me around? Come and have a look. Brilliant. Oh, lovely. What a transformation. It's so homely, isn't it? It's a world away from the tired old interior I saw a year ago. Renovating this barge was more than just a business venture, because this is also a family home. And I'm now really beginning to see how it will work as an appealing place to spend a holiday. Are you pleased with how it's looking? Yes, I'm, I'm really pleased at the way it's pulled together. I, th I think this is um, somewhere that guests can come, they can sit and, you know, relax. If the weather's not that great outside, they can sit in a, 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 on a comfortable sofa and watch the world go by. Um, or if it's too hot outside and they want some escape from the heat, they can come in. We'll eat in here as well, so I think it works really well. I th I'd like to think it's a warm and welcoming room. <laughs> Small details like painting this narrow hallway in light, bright colours have made a real difference. And the nautical details reflect the body's passion for life on the water. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. It's good to see the family bathroom finally finished. And even more surprising is how bright the rooms are with such small portholes for light. And this looks very good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. This looks, what I really like is the way the, the, the kind of the dark wood and the light walls work. Mm. And there is a really, it's quite airy, you know, and spacious. Mm. Yeah, it is. And progress on board hasn't gone unnoticed by long-suffering daughters Sophie and Katie. I really like my bedroom. When I came in and I saw it, I didn't recognise it. It wasn't my bedroom. Well, no dirty laundry on the floor, was it? <laughs> the bow looks really, really good. There's nice little touches here and there. And it's, it's civilised now. It's civilised. So, I mean, that's quite surprising. <laughs> it really is. I mean, usually every house we've lived in, no matter what it is, has been a complete mess. Although they've renovated three cabins so far, they ultimately hope to sleep eight guests, 
which means the family have more money to find and more work to do before the boat is at maximum capacity. Oh, yeah. Still... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the old barge. Ah, oh, back to the new barge. Exactly, exactly. That's a definitely a winter job. That's the next big challenge, is it, that yeah. barge? Right, so, yeah. Keen to show off the old barge on the water and quell any doubts that Lottie is seaworthy, David and Hilary take me for a final jaunt down the River Colne near Colchester. I'm impressed with what I've seen so far, but I am really curious to find out how much they've actually spent. When I first came aboard and, and met you, you told me it was going to take you 20,000 to, to finish the boat up. How much have you spent? We've spent 15 to date and we haven't finished. We've still got a bathroom to do and we've still got um, the office to do. I mean, I think you've done really well. There must have been an enormous temptation to go to the bank, get some money, get things moving, but you've really resisted that, haven't you? All the way down the line, vigorously. We were absolutely really adamant good. that we were not going to do that. It's going back to the ethos of our parents and our grandparents' day, where you saved up to do something. Um, but we haven't borrowed, borrowed a penny. What do you think she's worth? We yes. reckon this is about, is it sitting on about three, 350. Really? Yeah. 300,000 quid? Yeah. Wow. So you've done really quite well, haven't you? So the barge has doubled in value, and I really admire the bodies for sticking to their plan to not borrow money, despite the temptation to do so. Though I still believe if they'd had some notion of a schedule, they would have given themselves a better chance of making it to France. But despite the setbacks, none of this seems to have dented their enthusiasm for life on the water. Last time I saw you, Hilary, you were pretty definite that if you didn't get out of the ditch, you felt in some way that the dream would be in real jeopardy, would almost be over. Do you still feel that way? I think you probably hit me at one of the lower points, probably covered in rust dust or something. Um, no, the dream is very much still alive. Um, we will be going next spring. We're now confident because we've got a beautiful looking boat. I know you've had your moments of, I suppose, I think doubt might be too strong a word, but you know, you, your moments of concern about progress and getting there and David. I mean, he, now you're here. Mm -hmm. Are you pretty proud of what he's done? I'm immensely proud of what he's done. Always have been, but I, I, it's, I, I just have to drive him hard. He's stayed focused in his own laid back, horizontal way. He's the one who's been in the ditch virtually 24-7. I've had the escape, and he's actually learnt new skills and brought about 90% of the change that you see on this boat. So, yes, he deserves to take a bow, don't you? Thank you. This is the first time we've ventured on such a project, and I, I do genuinely think you learn an awful lot more about your partner when you do take on something of this magnitude. I really do, and so... If I've learned anything about Hilsey, it's certainly about, about her staying power as well as my staying power. Any regrets? We don't really deal in what's gone and regrets. Look, we are sitting here, setting sun, beautiful scenery, glasses of sunset. Cheers. Congratulations. I really admire the body's relentless optimism and spirit of adventure. Things that might not have always gone to plan, but they have never lost sight of their dream new life in France. And Hilary and David have transformed this once rusty barge into a wonderful family home. As for Sancerre on the canals of Burgundy, well, there's always next year. <laughs>